Hello. Yep, it's me again. It's back to the basics. The, I am your hostess, and this is a back to the basics brief. So I like to ask questions as I always do. Do you see what I see? And as for those who are watching what's on the screen, think for yourself. And for all those who may come on the channel, you know, feel free to hit the subscribe button, you know, hit the like, hit the subscribe, you know, <laughs> and hit the notification bell, please. Yeah, hit, 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 hit all that. <laughs> okay, so this article. Before I get into this article, I, let, me, let me put something up here. Let me put something up here. Got to put up the 2020 vision. And I'm telling you, 2020 has been a very interesting year. So this article coming from The Guardian... Before I get into the article, here are some pictures of the protests that are going on in, in Nigeria, ending SARS. We're going to talk about what SARS is over there in SARS now. It's a great photo. See our black men leading the protests. Let me get that off the screen. Let's get into this article. The Guardian. Nigeria to disband SARS police unit accused of killings and brutality. This article um, was published on 11 October 2020, and it was written by Mr. Emmanuel. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his last name because I'm going to butcher it. And he he uh, this was coming from Lagos, Nigeria. So Nigeria to disband SARS police unit accused of killings and brutality. Announcement comes after growing protests, but critics say it does not go far enough. All right, so let's unpack a little bit of this. This is a short article. Just bear with me. Nigeria's government has dissolved an infamous police unit plagued with allegations of extrajudicial killings and abuse after days of protest against police brutality. A wave of out outrage has been fueled over the last week by the emergence online of graphic footage and shared experiences of abuse by the special anti-robbery squad, commonly called SARS. In SARS began as a largely online movement trending internationally on social media and gaining the support of figures, including the football, the footballer Marcus Rashford and the actor John. Boy Boyega. Many of those marching in Lagos and cities across Nigeria have been in their 20s and 30s. So Generation Y and Z protesting for the first time and spurred by personal experiences of or connections with abuses by the security forces. The special anti-robbery squad, SARS, of the Nigerian police force has been dissolved with immediate effect. A statement by the office of the president 
Muhammadu Buhari said on Sunday. Inspector General Muhammad Adu Okay. Adamu, who had previously dismissed the prospect of the unit being disbanded, also announced new measures in response to the yearnings of the of the Nigerian people. SARS officers would be redeployed to other units, he said, and a new policing arrangement to replace it would soon be announced. Now, notice the language on that last sentence. SARS officers would be redeployed to other units, he said, and a new policing arrangement to replace it would soon be announced. So I have my bubble here. So here's the question that I asked, redeployed, what does this mean? Perhaps reassignment, but they use the word redeployed. Given a reoccurring cycle in Nigeria of public outrage leading to government pledges that are then perceived not to have brought about tangible change, the announcement was greeted by a mixture of euphoria that the authorities had been forced to act and frustration that the measures did not go far enough. So again, some of the verbiage here, here's a note with the language used here, one can argue this has happened before with little change. Looks similar to America. And it does. When we go back and look at these pictures, as far as them waving the Nigerian flag, the signs, and them marching. And here's some of the key words in this paragraph. Reoccurring cycle, we see tangible. So, so this has happened more, th more than once in the past. And then we see the word tangible, change, and then a mixture. And frustration. So this has been going on for a while now. I'm going to read it one more time and then I'm going to move on to the next page. Given a reoccurring cycle in Nigeria of public outrage leading to government pledges that are then perceived not to have brought about tangible change, the announcement was greeted by a mixture of euphoria that the authorities had been forced to act and frustration that the measures did not go far enough. And here, look at this picture. So this picture Police use water cannon to disperse protesters in Abuja on Sunday. And here we go. It has the photograph. Uh, Mr. Abraham, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your last name. But I mean, come on, a water cannon. So what's the difference between using a water cannon and a fire hose that was used previously? I mean, look at that. Amnesty International's director in Nigeria, Osai Ojingho, said the announcement falls short of demands for accountability and justice for abuses committed by the unit and police in general. So key word, accountability and justice. The police authorities must state strongly the concrete steps they will take to ensure all officers alleged to have committed human rights violations are investigated and brought to justice. And here's a question here. Well, a couple of questions. Okay, three questions that I put after that statement. So now, is police brutality classified as a human rights violation? If so, is police brutality a form of domestic terrorism. Why or why not?
because now looking if we're if we're talking about human rights now now we're getting into the international criminal court we're getting into the um the uh, geneva conventions the uh what is it the universal De uh, declaration of human rights which was put into effect december 10th 1948 so now we're getting into international law i'm going to read this sentence one more time the police authorities must state strongly the concrete steps they will take to ensure all officers alleged to have committed human rights violations are investigated and brought to justice. SARS was set up in 1992 to address rising violent crime, but many have accused the unit of gradually mirroring the groups they were set up to stop. Armed police in the capital, Abuja, used force against protesters who were marching as the decision to dissolve it was announced. Several videos posted on social media appeared to show officers firing live rounds and using tear gas and water cannon at fleeing demonstrators, many of whom reported injuries. One demonstrator said she had seen a group of six officers beating a woman with batons and sticks, confirming video posted online. One pr protester, Jimmo Iziaka, was shot dead by police in the southwestern state of Oyo. The governor said in a statement on Saturday, and a police officer, Stanley, was also killed during clashes in the southern state of Delta. Wow. That's interesting. Six officers beating a woman. Ooh, Lord. And then we have another gentleman shot dead. And a police officer killed. Many protesters who rallied in recent days described the calls to disband SARS as just the beginning of police reform in Nigeria. First it's SARS and then it's the whole police system. Because even with ordinary policemen and women, we are not safe. Anuala 26 said in Lagos, this is not just about SARS, it's about ending police brutality, said Mr. Onanuku, a musician in Lagos who led chants as a thousand march in the affluent neighborhood of Ekoi blocking a bridge and a roundabout. We won't stop. We'll be here tomorrow and the next day and next year until there's change. People are fed up, not just here, but globally, he said, adding that he had almost lost his life after an encounter with the SARS unit. I could almost not be here, he said. The right to protest is enshrined in Nigerian law, but protest movements are regularly suppressed as security forces often see them as threats to stability. Experiences of police abuses are near, in, excuse, <clears throat> excuse me, ubiquitous. Yeah. I'm trying, y'all. We got, we got, we got to, we got, we got to, we got to sound out words. <laughs> so, before I move on, we're almost at the end of the article. Now, notice what these um, these two sentences are saying. The right to protest is enshrined in Nigerian law, comma, but protest movements are regularly suppressed as security forces often see them as threats to stability. So here's my statement. While there is a right to protest, if not enforced, these laws only look good on paper. So what's, so, so what good is it? Okay. This is no shade to Nigeria, but, but this is just a uh, statement in general to any country. What good is it to have a law that is not even enforced. 
again, it's it only looks good on paper. But if you don't have, if you don't enforce it, then what good is that law? And I think that is what the problem is. We have laws on the books, but they're not being enforced. So it's easy for anyone to introduce new legislation. Well, you know, um, we're going to introduce new legislation to make it appear that they're actually working when really there's already laws on the books that are not being enforced. So there's this deception, if I may say, that something is actually being done when really nothing is being done. It's just a trick. But protest movements are regularly suppressed as security forces often see them as threats to stability. So again, security forces. So security forces are, if I may say this, are supposed to be protecting the people, not suppressing the people. Experiences of police abuses are re- are near ambiguous. Hmm. So let me see what my next statement is. And and here's what I'm talking about, just to draw a comparison with what's going on here in the United States. Have we not seen National Guard units activated by state governors? Particularly, let's not forget about what happened in Kentucky and, and, and what went down with the Kentucky National Guard along with the Louisville Metropolitan uh, uh, Metro Police Department particularly in the case of David McAtee. And then what happened in Oregon? And then I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they were also called in the city of Washington, D.C. And with that being said, let me run this banner real quick. So I'm going to remind you, none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch element or government entity. And I'm going to repeat that one more time. None of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch element or government entity. Okay, we can leave that and we're going to let that run. And let me keep going. Here we go. And this is the end of the article. At the demonstration in Ikoyi, medics attended protesters standing in the heat, providing free glucose and paracetamol. Organizers have raised thousands of pounds to buy water, food, and supplies for protesters in different parts of the country. Hundreds of lawyers have volunteered to help those detained. Renu Oduala, a brand influencer at a sit-in outside the government headquarters in Lagos, said she felt the protests were fueling hope. It's inspiring because people have come out to donate money, food, and all from all over the world, she said. I'm hopeful because the whole world is watching us. And that is the end of the article. I mean, but this picture right here of this water cannon being used, this is just, (laughs) I mean, let me see if I can blow this up one more. Just a little bit more. Yeah, this is just, how are you going to do that to people? You're going to use a, a water, a water cannon. I mean, a whole, I mean, look at that. You, you see how m- militarized that is? But this is supposed to be the police. And security forces is a very loose term. Very loose, very loose. It gives a lot of 
Sounds very paramilitary to me. Yeah, let me, let me get back to that picture. That is just, yeah. I am not feeling that at all. Really not. Really not feeling that. But anyway, I'm going to stop sharing, uh, excuse me, stop sharing this screen and share another screen. Now notice here, this, this first opening sentence that Mr. Emmanuel uh, wrote. He used the term extrajudicial killings. So let me stop sharing the screen. And I think I'm gonna, here, let me put something up real quick. In fact, I might want to take a few seconds and break. Let me let me let me, let me do this real quick. Let me put this logo to this 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 young man back up on here. Yeah, I just want to make sure you can see. Do you see what I see? And just make sure you hit that. You know, you hit the like, subscribe, share button. Thank you for watching. It's most appreciated. And let me do this. Okay, we had to take a little bit of a, of a, you know, of a break. And now let me start sharing this screen. Okay, let me get this off of here. Oh yeah, let me pump this up so you can actually see. I guess that would be helpful, huh? <laughs> there we go. I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. See, I typed in the word extrajudicial. I wanna see if my memory, and look at Google already predicting what I'm getting ready to do here. <laughs> So the article said extrajudicial killings. So this is the Wikipedia. Okay. Let's see, we're gonna go to Wikipedia and see what Wikipedia says. And I don't want you guys, yeah, you guys are struggling to read that. So let me see if I can pump this up a little bit more. There we go. Because I want you guys to see. Oh, okay, I did that. <laughs> I clicked on something else. There we go. Let me see what our Zoom, how is our Zoom looking? Because I want you to be able to see this. Let me get on back over here. We still got the blue spinning wheel. It's all good. There we go. All right. I know y'all can see that now. So extrajudicial killing. We're just going to go into this briefly. An extrajudicial killing, also known as extrajudicial execution, is the killing of a person by governmental authorities or individuals without the sanction of any judicial proceedings or legal process. Extrajudicial killings often target leading political trade, union, descendant religious and social figures. Okay. And here, as we can see here, human rights groups noticed in the article, 
Amnesty International is a non-governmental organization or an NGO with its headquarters in the United Kingdom focused on human rights. The organization says it has more than 8 million members and supporters around the world. And then, of course, the Human Rights Watch is an international non-governmental organization headquartered in New York City that conducts research and advocacy on human rights. The group pressures governments, policymakers, companies, and individual human rights abusers to denounce abuse and respect. Uh oh. Never mind. We're probably going to have to click on that to actually see. And respect human rights, and the group often works on behalf of refugees, children, migrants, and political prisoners. But getting back to the definition of extrajudicial killings, that's what it means. This is like, this would be sort of similar to like the secret police, as as some may say. And, and when you get into extrajudicial in terms like that, we are starting to go from national to, again, as I've stated before, international criminal court and different things like that, you know. But thank you for watching. Let me stop sharing this screen. It's been a minute. It has been a minute. But thank you for being here. I just wanted to, you know, be here for just a little while. And just to remind people that police brutality is global. Um, there's also reports of it occurring. It just, it just occurs everywhere and very in all over the globe. Um, but just to show these pictures, they are protesting these extra judicial, or should I say these allegations right now? Cause again, no one has been brought to trial as far as we know. They are protesting these allegations of extrajudicial killings, which is quite disturbing. Yes, very interesting times that we're living in. But thank you for watching. Hit the like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It's most appreciated. Um, just remember to think for yourself. This isn't about anyone agreeing or disagreeing. This is just the article that I found to be quite interesting, and I feel that it should be shared because police brutality is is real. It, it, it is real. I understand that there's some people that may have the, that may have the opinion that, oh, you know, here we go with this victim narrative. It's not even about a victim narrative. This is reality. Our people are dying. People are being killed. I was um, looking today and people are, people are being, again, I need to find that story about that young man. I know I recently did some material on David McAtee, but there was a young man, I do believe, if I recall, in Columbus, Ohio, that got snatched off the street. And that happened in a little bit after David McAtee, around early June, somewhere June, June time frame. Um, that's disturbing. You know, one minute he was on the streets of Columbus and the next thing you know, here there's a police car. I think it was a van and then another p police car, f you know, f following that. And I'm like, OK, whatever happened to him? But 
But anyway, that's a whole nother different um, getting into missing persons. That's a whole nother. Oh, that's a whole nother episode. But thank you for being here. I love you as a sister. Um, this isn't about fear mongering. I'm not telling you this for you to be afraid, but I highly recommend that you maintain situational awareness, that you change up on your regular routine, and that you travel in groups as often as possible. I also recommend that you have a toolkit or your toolbox nearby. Remember, a gun is a tool of many. Maintain the tools in your toolkit, in your toolbox. As far as what tools that you want to put in your toolbox, well, get creative. Remember, a gun is just a tool. Just make sure you know, first of all, that you... Uh, you are licensed to carry. I'm not suggesting anyone break the law as far as, you know, with as far as acquiring a weapon. But know how to, first of all, clear your weapon. Maintain your weapon and shoot your weapon accurately. And with that being said, I love you as a sister. Once again, none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch, element, or government entity. The Most High be with you to lead, guide, and protect your footsteps. And with that being said, I'm gone.